event, but I do have my friend here, Phil Anderson, who is running for <laughs> He is a independent, and uh, he is running for office. So. Thanks, Chris, and thanks for coming out, everyone, especially if you had to drive down here and brave this traffic. As Chris said, I'm an independent candidate for United States Senate, so I'm running against Tammy Baldwin, whose office is right up there, which she's rarely in. Let's talk about the cannabis issue. A lot of people think about it as if it's a freedom issue, and it is, but it's also one of justice. Because whether or not you agree with me and many people that the war on cannabis started for racist purposes, it certainly has had racist results. If you look at the amount of uh, rate of incarceration of people of color since the war on cannabis started in the early 70s, it way passes you know, any other proportion of white people being incarcerated. And it's not like white people smoke any less weed, it's the targeting of people and using the marijuana laws to do that. And that has a lot of drastic effects to society downstream, right? When people get put in jail for doing something they should be free to do, what happens to families? What happens to those, the children of those families? What happens to the expense of social services, incarceration rates, generational poverty? That all comes from a war on freedom that started in the early 70s. And the problem is not necessarily with Republicans or Democrats. I know somebody mentioned a presidential candidate before me. But the problem is the system itself. Both Democrats and Republicans have done, have supported the war on drugs, the war on people, the war on freedom since it started. It doesn't matter, party doesn't matter. So when Tony Evers said that he was gonna do something about the marijuana situation in Wisconsin and got elected in 2018, he could have done a lot more, he didn't. He refused to stand up. When people like Tammy Baldwin say that they're pro-legalization, that's just something they want to say to you to get you to vote, to vote the same old way, to assume that Democrats are going to do something about it when they never, ever do. The one good member of the state legislature on this issue is recently retired and is going to be, is running for Dane County Executive, so I support her, even though she's a Democrat, uh, Melissa Agard. But very, very few people actually mean what they're saying. Why? Because their donors are the ones that pay for their party apparatus. Their donors are people like Big Pharma and Big Paper that don't want cannabis legalized, don't want hemp legalized because it's competitive. What the last thing they want is for you to be able to grow something and take something that, that you should be free to do, that entertains you, makes you feel better, that it can be as medicine. They don't want that because it competes with the very people that fund them. So the only, the only option you have if you really care about this issue is to opt out of two-party politics. To say, look, they're, you're, both big parties are guilty of this and have been for 50 years. And nobody's done anything about it. You know, it'd be interesting if Joe Biden were still running. You guys remember what Joe Biden wrote in the 1990s? The crime bill, right? The crime bill. Talking about not wanting his kids to live in a racial jungle. And the Clintons talking about predators. It's all language for racism, right? And it all comes out of a crime bill that was set up to create things like mandatory minimum, minimum sentences and things that are directly targeted at poor people and people of color. It's a class war. And like George Carlin said, the government's run by a big club and we're not in it. And that's not partisan. That's just the truth. We see that the people of Democrats and Republicans do not respond to what the public says. They don't care. They only respond to what donors say, and the donors help them control the media so that they can come around every two, four, six years, lie to you, make you feel comfortable, tell you fairy tales, and get you to go to the polls and vote and hope that something's going to happen that never fucking happens. It never changes. Nothing has changed. And to veer onto a slightly different topic, war. We've been at war for 70 years, somewhere or another. And candidates go up every election cycle and say, this needs to end, it needs to stop, I'm going to stand up to the military-industrial complex, I'm going to cut off the corruption, and it never, ever happens. And why? They're lying, and they're lying on behalf of the people that give to their campaigns, that give to their parties. And it's the same with cannabis. They don't want you to be free, they don't want you to be free to grow your own medicine, to take your own medicine, they don't want you to be able to free to ingest what you want to without them taxing it or prohibiting it. And the only answer is to stand up and not accept this sort of two-party, fake, theater politics any longer. Make sure that you vote. Make sure that you look at what your candidates stand for. Not only what they say on their sound bites and their Twitter posts and whatever, but what they've done, more importantly, what they haven't done since they've been, since they've been in office. And I guarantee you, if you care about freedom, if you care about justice, you will never, ever vote for Tammy Baldwin again. And you certainly won't vote for her opponent, Eric Hubney.
Thank you. Yeah, thank you again for coming. And remember, tomorrow, uh, probably around 3 o'clock, is when the band will start farther up the hill. But thank you again for coming. See you again. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Thank, thanks for the band again. The band was fabulous. Let's hear it for Chris Nass for doing this. Let's hear it for de re decriminalizing weed in Wisconsin. I'm sick of this shit, man. And I got my own strain of weed now. It's called Sister Sensi, and I'm very proud of that. It's purple. <laughs>